What's going on YouTube? It's Marvin. Today I bring to you something new. I'm not too sure what I'm gonna call it yet. Whether it's gonna be Adobe and chill, Lightroom and chill, Photoshop and chill, I, I, I don't really know yet. I do want to be on YouTube more often. I struggle with breaking down videos and having shorter videos with more precise content in it. So I feel like this might be a happy medium. Within this series of videos, you're gonna get the real raw me, I guess. It's not going to have any kind of script to it. It's just going to be me in front of a camera, just doing what I do when the cameras are off. So if you hear my family in the background, if you hear the dishwasher run like it was just a second ago, that's just basically my surroundings. That's what you're going to get. If you're new here, my name is Marvin and I am a photographer and videographer. And I have started this channel for fellow creatives who are maybe wanting to speed up their workflow or find out different tips and tricks. If I'm honest, at this moment, it's it's quite broad, this channel, but hopefully things like this should kind of make it a little bit more niche and you should get a little bit more expectation out of what I have to offer in the future. So with that being said, I'm gonna set up my scene, my atmosphere, and we'll get started. Let me take the friction from your Camera two check, bit of color feel like. Alexa, turn on lamp two. I just, I just did my hair too. Like, I know you guys saw the last one where I had my hair up and stuff. Did I do all right? Can't really see the light room and chill, but. Yeah, you get a point. Season one, episode one. The good thing with the photos that I've selected for today, they are very old. This is literally when I first got my A6400 and the first lens that I bought was a 50 mil 1.8, better known as the, the nifty 50. I kept five raws, which is good. Develop tab will take us from start to finish with these photos. So first and foremost, I don't think I'm going to work with this image. So my normal selection process will consist of a one star to maybe throw away. Um, I think that is a contender, so I'll leave it at four stars. Um, let's have a quick flick through. So I think I'm actually going to work with, not the composition wasn't that great, um, but I think I'm gonna work with this one. Um, I think I'm gonna leave that as a four star. I mean, not bad, but and I think I'm gonna work with that one too. I tell a lie, I might change that one to a four star and this one to a five star. So today I would see us working primarily on the two five star images. First things first, I can see that there is an exposure change or exposure difference and it looks like one stop. I actually want to tone down the exposure a little bit. I don't want it as bright as what it was. Now the highlights are quite strong. This was a shot that was out in the sunlight, as you can see. Turn down those highlights quite a bit. Normally I'd start with noise reduction, but of course, as there is no noise because it's shot at ISO 100, there is no need. I'm going to enable profile corrections just so that it helps the lens out a little bit. I know that this lens is notoriously known for chromatic aberrations. That's when you get purple and green fringing around certain places, but everything seems to be pretty good, if I'm honest. So my next stop is the tone curve. And I mean, it will change, it will change for every photo. I'm going to kind of have a, a little bit of a washed out look on the blacks create a little bit of a, what they call an S curve. Only a tiny one, if I'm honest. I don't really want to blow out those highlights. It might not even be an S curve right now. And I'm just gonna potentially mute the whites a tiny bit. What I mean by that is there's no direct black point and there's no direct white point either. So once I get back to the normal sliders, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna dip the highlights down even more just so there's less of a hot spot on her face. I'm just gonna darken the shadows a tiny bit. I think that's about right. I, I like quite a contrasty image. 
Um, so having something with higher whites in, in tolerance, of course, and darker shadows as well um, is, is quite nice. I like the tones of the photo currently. I think they, they match perfectly. I think they're fine. So I'm gonna leave them exactly where they are. Generally speaking, I drop the clarity and up the texture. I think that's about right for me. I feel like the clarity slider works a lot more with the color tonality and spreading the tones as you do in Photoshop. And the texture just kind of gets all your contrast in right in your, yeah, I know it, it works in my mind and in my eyes. If it works for you, then it works for you. I think that it's saturated pretty well. Uh, Vibrance is, is generally quite good at dodging the skin tone. Um, basically it's like saturation, but it, um, it doesn't push orange as much as what saturation would. Makes it a lot more flattering when you want to add in saturation, but you don't want to kill the natural skin tones. I like the open airy feel of this image already and what it's looking like. So sharpening. <laughs> I like a lot of sharpening. I like a lot of subject separation. So I generally have it up quite high or as high as I can all the time. And then I hold the alt key and I pull masking across. So this is where all the sharpness is going to apply. Ultimately, what I wanna do is I want to get it away from it touching all of the skin tones. Um, otherwise, you're just gonna be sharpening the whole image and I wanna just key in on her outline and her eyes and features. Split toning, I only really use if I'm going for a quirky style. Sony shooters love a teal and orange. Let's try and see what we get with a, a tint of teal and orange in there. So in the shadows, um, at that teal space, at the highlights, you find some orange and then a bit of saturation, not too much marv. And then just use this slider to see before and after. Oh, to be fair, it's quite nice. I think I might dim down the teal or make the teal just a little bit darker. Mm, I don't know. I think I think it was a bit overkill, if I'm honest. Let's see if I can turn it down just a little bit more. All right, we'll leave, it. we'll leave it where it is. We'll go with it, why not? With the collaboration, I tend not to touch unless I feel like there is a color or set of colors that just don't match up to how I saw that image and how I want that image to be. Otherwise, I would just kind of leave, leave my collaboration where it is. Now let's get to the colors. I'm gonna mess around with everything else first. And then with the skin tones, I will look at them in a little bit more of a fine tune after. So let's check to see if there were any magentas in this image. I don't think, let's zoom in actually and see. Yeah, there are some in there. Just making them a little bit more visible with dropping the luminance. Aquas and blues, I don't think there is much blue in this image. There's not many obvious blues. Oh, there are a lot of greens. I like a rich green. Um, however, I don't want to, I don't want to take away from the portrait, the, the main subject. However, I do like separation and I feel like these colors, they're not necessarily complementary, but they are very, very different. You can definitely see the difference between that image, which is kind of closer to yellow and yellow is closer to orange skin tones um, and this kind of just separates itself from the main subject so I think I will kind of change the hue a little bit the saturation is where I feel like it might be getting a bit more distracting and stealing the show so I'm gonna dip that saturation down and then I think I'm gonna do the same with uh, luminance just a tiny bit I guess for my own personal taste Let's see what we can get away with with the yellows. Bear in mind, if you were to change your yellows, 
you may get some of the skin tones in there too. As I'm gonna crop this image, I think I'm gonna blend them more towards the green side anyway. And the oranges, so everything that I've done, I don't feel has really kind of taken away from the main subject. So I think I'm just gonna kind of find a point where I'm comfortable with and I'm happy with. Tiny bit more saturation for the oranges and a little bit of luminance to show off the bright day. So I'm gonna clear up some minor, minor imperfections. So these are just small raises in the skin. So not going too far with the photo and taking things out. I'm only taking things out that would change on a day-to-day -day basis. If there are ever marks on the subject's skin that are permanent and kind of don't go away, then generally I would stay away from them. That is a part of that person. That is a part of their, their natural beauty. So after taking out um, any visibly and noticing imperfections, I will just add in a couple of touches uh, in contrast. Press O on my keyboard just so that I can see whereabouts that I am brushing. So I'll keep the flow pretty low. She's gonna kill me for uh, <laughs> zooming so close to her eyebrows. On this mask, um, if you kind of go too far, then you can just kind of hold Alt and you can basically take away from where you've gone too far. I've got it on a auto mask, as you can see just down here. It generally seems to work pretty well and it doesn't kind of overspill. Uh, however, at times it does. So then you can just kind of press Alt, go back and then go from there. I'm just kind of going over here roughly over all of the darker spots of the face. So eyebrows just around the edges of hair, just to create separation. I, I knew that was gonna happen to be fair. Still scared to shit at me. So after I'm done with that, I can then go to my slider and just basically mess around. Yeah, I want, I want some pretty big shadow increases. Her eyes are quite dark, so what I might do is just grab onto a new mask and there's not very much catch light. So let's press O on here again, just so I can see what I'm doing. So from that point, I actually want to increase my shadows. The first thing I want to do is increase the whites. Any whites in there will basically add to the catch light that is already there. Upping that contrast just a little bit will once again create that separation and slightly changing the exposure should just have a tiny bit more of a pop. I think the white is doing most of it. She's got deep brown eyes, so yeah, that's that's all that we're gonna kind of get from there. I think the last touch for this photo before I move on to the next will just be a quick mask for her lips. From a wider view, she just looks like Joker. There goes them. Let's come back out. Let's up the contrast. And let's up the saturation ever so slightly. Where is it? There you are. Just to bring out her lips a little bit. I'm pretty happy with that image. That would be my kind of final edit. So I'd copy over the information and then take it over to this image here. It's not taken over all the information. So let me try and copy it, copy it over. What I don't want is the spot removal. We haven't cropped it yet. I'm gonna take out the brush and that's pretty much everything. So what I might do is just look at the tones and try and match it the best way that I know how. So what I'm actually gonna do is drop that exposure back down again. Even the greens aren't the same, what is going on? I'm going to raise the shadows of this image. And I think that will 
drop that exposure down a tiny bit more. I think that kind of matches a bit better. Even the skin tones are a little bit out, uh, maybe because the sun is hitting our face in a different way. I'm not too sure, but everything else seems to be the same. Ah, one last thing. There was one last thing, wasn't there? The temperature, so. Let's see if that changes a whole bunch. Okay, so I think that did. I think that was the missing ingredient. It was just a little bit cooler. Was it cool? Yeah, it was, it was a little bit cooler in the first image. And I think that matches just a little bit better. If you think I'm crazy, then <laughs> comment you're crazy down below. Now that I've got that kind of preset, I'm just gonna do everything that I did before in relation to the brush tool and the spot removal tool, and then we will call it a session. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy with these images now. Well, definitely from a Lightroom perspective, I would love to do a little bit more work with them on Photoshop. I feel like that could just take the image a little bit further, make it just that bit better. However, for Lightroom, for a quick edit, for something that was sitting in my archives for years, I don't feel like this is a bad compromise. As they're going on Instagram, more than likely, I will crop them to like a four, four by five. I didn't frame this very well, <laughs> is what it is. Straight enough, you can get the main details out of the photo and that is the job pretty much done. And export, all done. Final edits you'll see on the screen, befores and afters, my editing flow. If you've got any questions about what I've done or anything that you would change, please do let me know and we can discuss it and talk about it in the next episode of Lightroom, Adobe, Photoshop, whatever it is and chill. I'm just, I'm probably gonna call it Marvelous Visuals and Chill or something like that. I think that's a little bit more future proof for, for anything that I wanna speak about. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. Until the next time, stay well, speak soon. Peace. Alexa, turn off lamp two. Lights out.